Yeah, it's possible by Squarespace, all right. Oh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Side of dice, right here. Six sided dice, where is it? Cat, where is it? Huh? Uh, come on. Cough it up. Cough it up. Honestly, beads and now dice. I can't. It's not acceptable. Come on, cop. What? You're enjoying this. There we go. There we go. Got it. I think I'm going to have to start feeding you food, cat. Hello everyone, welcome to episode 56. Uh, Christmas is over, New Year's over. You know, Christmas isn't a good time for YouTubers because apparently you lot have lives and you go and do other things other than watch YouTubers, which a bit selfish. But anyway, uh, that's all over. Uh, hopefully uh, I can have your full attention again. Now I'm not sure exactly what to build, but I have this little thing that I do with my patrons where we roll a dice and we let the dice decide. So you need a dice, six-sided dice, and it's still good. So you roll a dice, six-sided dice, and uh, it decides, kind of gives you an idea of what you're going to build. So one to two is a mechanical thing, like a robotic, non-organic, basically. If you roll a three or a four, it's organic, biological, like a monster. Or if it's five or six, it's human, humanoid, or a vehicle, something like that. You know, something for humans, basically. So the first roll... Two. So it's going to be some kind of mechanical thing like a robot. Uh, so next is how many limbs does it have? Six. So that could be six arms and no legs or six legs and no arms or, you know, four arms, two legs, four legs, two, you know, you, you get the point. The next one is how many weapons. Now weapons can be uh, guns, uh, claws, swords, teeth, mouth, if you want it to be, you know, I'm, it's not that strict. So I've got two. The last roll is how many eyes does it have? You know, I tend to have a lot of eyes in my build, so I need to limit myself to six or less. So one eye. Um, there you go. So it's going to be mechanical slash robot thing with six limbs, uh, with two weapons and one eye. Um, there you go. That's what I'm going to be building today. The fates have decided. But anyway, it's going to be fun. I like the challenge. Uh, let's start building, shall we? time to sketch. I like to sketch before I start building. It gives me some kind of idea of what I'm doing. Uh, patrons get to see this sketchbook uh, on Patreon. You know, if you have ever wondered the sort of weird stuff I stick in the sketchbook, click that link below, join Patreon. There you go. I'm going to design a monster with six limbs, one eye, two weapons, and, you know, robotic, uh, non-biological. Now, I have this idea of a creature kind of like the Shrike, if anyone's ever read Hyperion. Basically, this forearm creature with uh, giant claws. So you may be thinking, not your best drawing to build. I mean, yeah, this is basically me just trying to figure out the silhouette of the creature, you know how it's gonna stand, how it's gonna hold itself. Is it gonna be like a big hulking mass, like hunched over, or is it gonna be like a big lanky thing? You know, long legs, long, I don't know. This is what I'm figuring out. I have many people who say they can't draw, but I'm sure you could draw this, if anything, just to get the dimensions right before you start chucking junk together. You know, it does help. Uh, so, you know, no excuses, get those sketchbooks out. Uh, but I'm gonna do a nice drawing, because you know me, I like a nice drawing. I plan on doing a kind of pencil drawing, if that makes any sense. Basically, I want to cover the whole background in this kind of tone of grey. I got this new pencil sharpener, by the way. That's why I keep bringing it out. It's quite fun to use. And I was also thinking, you know, that stuff in there, you know, the pencil sharpenings, I can use that. That's pretty much sawdust. Uh, 
could probably use that as some sort of vlog in the future. So I want this creature to be extra creepy. I want it to have a long, weird, winding neck like a snake and almost like a skull face, or maybe even a skull face. I'm not sure yet, uh, but it's gonna look a bit like Gasquito. Do you remember Gasquito, that thing I made a little while ago? It's gonna be a bit like that because I imagine they're related. They both come from the same place. Anyway, I'll talk about the lore later on in the painting section, as you all well know. So two of the arms have claws at the end. They, they're the two weapons this thing is going to have. Uh, but technically, they could be the weapons that I could draw an extra few arms, can I? I mean, it's stretching it a bit. I mean, I'm just going to draw a few extra arms in this picture just to see what it looks like, but I probably won't add it to the final build. Um, but yeah, you know, I think I'd just like to feel empty space on the page. So what I'm going for with this thing is almost organic metal. I like it to look like it has bones and rib cages and organs, almost like, you know, these wires covering its whole body, like veins and organs and yeah, like a robot made by a robot, you know, a robot trying to replicate what it sees in nature, but with metal and junk, if you know what I mean. Uh, but that's what I'm going for. And that's kind of why I think I'm going to go and dig out the generic holiday wire because, you know, I did stock up over Christmas, so expect wire, lots of wire. So this quick sketch turned out to be a long drawn out drawing, uh, which is all right. I, you know, I like drawing. Uh, hopefully you enjoy watching me draw, but that's not what you're here for. Let's get the junk out, the generic holiday wire, and let's build something. So this episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Now, if you've ever wanted to make a website and you're not really sure how to do it, Squarespace is the place to go. Look, you get provided with hundreds of templates like these just here, and they're all pretty cool designs, I'll give them that. And uh, say you want to make a website about pickles. Look, oh, there we go, there's a pickle website. You can literally open this up, change the names. There you go, you have a pickle website. So I decided to make a website of my own for bill making stuff. Now I've made plenty of websites in the past and I have to say that Squarespace is the easiest and most intuitive website builder I've ever used. It's uh, so easy to get great effect. I mean, look at this, this took me like five minutes. Uh, so if you wanna make a website, click on the link down below. There is a sale going on, uh, there you go. So I'm looking for a spherical shape to start my build. It's always hard to start the build off, but I think I'm gonna go with these plastic clear baubles. Uh, I've got a few of these. You can get them cheap after Christmas and uh, maybe one of these. This is like an all plastic egg from Easter. You can get those at Easter. Uh, it's a very kind of seasonal episode for some reason. Remember to sand down all your cheap plastic things, all your plastic junk, because otherwise super glue might not want to grip onto it. It would just want to grip onto your hands and give you old witch hands. Oops. Now I should wear gloves. You should wear gloves. I should wear gloves. We should all wear gloves, but uh, I just, I just don't. Uh, my hands at this point are like leather gloves anyway. So what difference would it make for me? But you should definitely wear gloves. So the oldest crafting trick in the book, use a bit of baking powder with super glue and you make like a really strong bond and it's really good for filling those little gaps. Now I often raid charity shops and thrift stores for these uh, wooden coasters. Now these wooden coasters make perfect little wooden bases for your models. I get them in all different sizes because they're dirt cheap. Now if I was to go buy real bases from a hobby shop, then I would probably just buy my own model instead of making it out of junk. That's the sort of person I'd probably be. So 
So this is some cheap wire I found. Uh, it's not armature wire. Well, you know, all wire is armature wire if you want it to be, but this is some really tough wire for, I don't know what else it's for. It is really hard to bend. It's not very user friendly, but uh, it's gonna be really sturdy when I attach it all together. Uh, what, what I'm saying is basically, if you are muscularly like me, you can use this wire. Uh, if not, just, just don't bother. So in my opinion, this is the hardest part of the build done. Once you've got that skeleton, you've got your silhouette done, you've got the arms and the legs, have a few more arms, there we go. Once the arms, the legs, the silhouette is done, you've got your shape, it's all fun from here. All fun, I mean it, honestly, I'm smiling. <laughs> Generic holiday wire. We need some sort of jingle for generic holiday wire. I call it generic holiday wire because it's always sold at Christmas uh, at the local pound shop. And it's, I think it's like floral wire. Basically it's very fine wire that's coated in a plastic and it works really well with super glue and you can basically sculpt with it, which is why I like it so much. And it's cheap, which is also pretty good. So we are gonna cover these arms and legs completely with wire, but before I do that, I kind of wanna add a few details that kind of just stick out from, look, you'll see what I mean, I'll just show you. Now this is a lollipop stick or a cake pop stick, you know, do you remember those cake pops? So I'm covering the arms and legs with little pipe things sticking out, basically for texture and something for the wire to grip onto. It all makes sense in a bit, just bear with me, please. Trust me, trust me. So what I want to do is take these little skinny arms and beef them up, basically. I want to wrap them in wire and just basically boil lay them up. Make them bigger, make them, you know, beefier. Now this takes a lot of wire and a lot of time. Um, you know, luckily the wire is replaceable, my time isn't. So I figured if I tied two wires together, that should half the time, you know, double the wire. And now I know what you're thinking, you know, why not triple it, you know, quadruple it. Let's not go crazy, okay? Just calm yourself down. And there we go, looking good, uh, you know, nearly done. I just have to do it one, two, three, four, five more times. Um, or I could just do this. I mean, this, yeah, that's a bit easier. If I just, yeah, that, there you go. That's, that's just a bit easier on me and you. Well, more you, less me, because, you know, that's how editing works. So this is conduit wire casing. It's basically like a case that goes over wire to protect it. I guess from like hamsters and cats. I mean, it's not a joke. I had a cat that used to just bite every single phone charger in half and then lick the end. I think he liked the, uh, the electric shock. Now this neck is pretty long. I hope it doesn't count as an extra limb because it's uh, pretty long, uh, but it's not. Trust me, it's a neck, okay? A long, creepy neck. So I guess it's about time to make the face. You know, I wanted a creepy looking skull face, you know, kind of like a skull-like face. I mean, skull would be perfect. Oh, oh hello, excuse me. Excuse me. Yeah, you mate. Uh, could you help me out? I just need, uh, just come here a second. Let me tell you something. No, 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 honestly, honestly, no, nothing to worry about. <laughs> Sorry, he was dead anyway. He was, you know, he was undead, you know, so technically dead. I just didn't know it yet. So I want the head to be kind of tilted at an angle, you know, as if it's inquisitive or, you know, coy or shy. That's kind of the thing I'm going for, you know, a big shy beast, monster, creepy thing. And it has a beard. Uh, it's not really a beard. It looks kind of like a beard, but I like it. So I'm going to keep it. <laughs> so 
So it's time to get out the bit boxes. I have several bit boxes full of bits. They're not organized in any kind of way, so don't ask. But basically, I'm looking for pipey, tubey bits, uh, like these little pegs from Battleship. So if you need tubey bits like I do, the two best places to get tubey bits uh, is well, basically, one is water pistols. They have lots of good tubey bits in. And old pens. Take old pens apart, you find all sorts of pieces like that. So this creature has lots of exhaust pipes and just generic pipes sticking out of its body. Uh, I like to cluster them in little clusters as if they are growths to kind of stick with the organic metal theme. And along the spine, things like that. I've just laid some pipe. Uh, that's the right expression, isn't it? Uh, I'm going to cover the whole thing in wires, like the arms and legs. And uh, like the arms and legs, it's going to take me absolutely forever. Um, so here we go. I've just had a word with the YouTube algorithm and it said uh, an eight hour video of me placing these wires would be fine. It would actually be, it would do quite well for the channel. Uh, but you know, when do I ever listen to the algorithm? Oh, nearly done. Just a few more on the underside there. And then there we go. And now we need to do some hands. I'm going to use this wooden bead because what would a build build be without a wooden bead? Be. Let's cut this in half. I do love wooden beads. You can basically cut them to whatever shape you want and super glue sticks them really well, uh, which is why I'm probably going to make the claws out of wood. I'm going to use this lollipop stick. So to make blades, claws and swords and things like that, uh, styrene plaster card is probably the way to go. You can carve it into whatever shape you want, but it's expensive. So we're not going to do that. We're going to use some old lollipop sticks. Now I want my claws to be nice and grungy and uh, kind of textured and degraded you know i want them to look like rusty bits of metal and i think wood works really well for that and then we have one creepy claw hand i'm gonna have to sort of blend that in with wires but it looks pretty good uh, i guess i should probably do the other one now and there we go they look pretty cool i think we just need to blend them in with a few more wires when i said we were done with wires i lied but honestly, yeah, we're done now. No more wires. Uh, let's move on to the next thing I can obsess about. So EVA foam sheets, not technically trash, but still dirt cheap. If you're trying to find this stuff and you can't, look in the children's section of any craft shop and you'll find it. You know, always in the kids section. I've never actually seen a kid use it in my life, but uh, yeah, always there. So I'm going to cover up all of that hard work I just did with some EVA foam. Thank you very much. Calm yourself down. I didn't cover the whole thing. Uh, I wanted these spots to look almost like scowls on the back of a lizard or spots on the back of like a beast uh, to stick with that organic metal thing i think it looks pretty good lots of lovely texture there it's all about the texture now we're going to do a few ribs along the uh, the chest and the tummy and i think we're nearly ready for paint i think there's just a few more things or just one thing uh, an eyeball it has two eye sockets but just one eye so technically that's the one eye i'm not cheating there uh, plus I made up rules, so you know, whatever. Now before I prime this model, I want to add some rocks to the base, just to make it a bit easier on myself later on. Now this is a placemat, you put your hot plate on this, so it doesn't set fire to your nice dining table. I find this bit kind of fun, just stick the bits back together like a really poorly put together jigsaw. Uh, and then you have some cracked earth. And you know, finally the world, the universe is in balance. Placemats are useful again.
So time to paint, although I will not be talking about paint because talking about paint is like watching paint dry, literally, and then talking about it drying, literally. I'm only joking, obviously. I do like watching other people paint. I just don't like to watch myself paint and talk about it. If you do have an old brush, uh, cut the end off and make yourself a little stippling brush like that. That's the only tip you're gonna get here in the painting section. Uh, and we're gonna talk about the lore of this creature, the, you know, the story behind this weird creature that has no name. Now it will have a name in the future. I'm just not very good at naming things. So I haven't figured out a name for it yet. I'm probably gonna ask my patrons. For now, I think I'll call this thing the creep, just to make storytelling a little bit easier. So, the creep wasn't always this big and this creepy. It started its life as a companion bot. Uh, a companion bot isn't what you think it is. A companion bot is basically a cute little robot that would keep children entertained or old people company, you know. Basically, it's uh, like a pet. So like all robots of the time, uh, the companion bot has a really advanced artificial intelligence chip inside, you know, so it can learn who its companions are, what their needs are, you know, and it, and it can begin to love them in a way, you know, like a puppy dog would. So the creep ended up living with an old man, uh, an old man who was essentially a hermit in a, a scrapyard in the middle of Tapu, you know, basically in the junk hills where the rusters live, but he kept himself to himself. The old man developed a bond with this robot and the robot developed a bond with the old man. The AI chip is so advanced that it essentially is a small child. So they both lived their life happily and peacefully, until they didn't, obviously. You know, a Rasta party came along one day, found them, and the leader of the party, a 12 foot tall Rasta with giant claws at the end of his arms, decided to kill the old man in front of the robot. Now, not even realizing that this robot was essentially his child, the robot ran away, ran into the junk hills for its life, and vowed revenge on that Rasta. So the poor little robot is left to wander the planet alone until one day it comes across the plant, uh, essentially a giant hole in the ground that leads to a manufacturing plant run by a godlike AI. The AI god, or the plant, uh, tries to convince the little robot uh, to join him, to become one of his children, uh, essentially give up your body and he'll give you a new one. And that's what happened. The little robot, no longer a companion bot, became this horrible, creepy killing machine. Uh, and it has to serve the plants every whim. But it does have, you know, some minor free will. It does seem to think it's a cute little bot sometimes, tilt of the head, you know, a few squeaks here and there. So the little robot wasn't stupid. He made a deal with the plant. He said, uh, for me to become part of your family, I need to avenge my family. So if you let me use this body, find the giant ruster that killed my father, then I will be yours forever. And that is what happened. Hence the giant ruster skull for a face. Now I'm sick of people asking me how to make crusted. Just to change the subject, this is how you make crusted. And there you go, there is the crusted recipe that I use. Uh, I did the episode at Christmas and I said I would answer every comment and 50% of the comments was, how do you make crusted? So I hope you enjoyed the whole lore section. I kind of ruined it at the end with the crusted bit, but you kept asking for it, so it's your fault really. Now I haven't shown you how to make all your wash in a while, so I figured I'd do that. All your paint, thinner, mix it together, all your wash. There you go. Now no good asking me about ratios because uh, I just kind of mix it as I go. Uh, sometimes I use a thick wash, sometimes I use a thin wash. It always seems to work for me, so uh, anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed that. There you go. And there we are, the creep, 
uh, slash the untitled creature. I'm not sure what he's called yet, but uh, we'll decide that on Patreon. Uh, click the link below. Uh, I did have a piece of the camera shot at the end for this, and uh, the sound just broke. It didn't work, so I couldn't do it in time. So sadly, you only see my face at the beginning of the video, and you just get to hear me now. Some people may consider that a bonus, um, you know, me included. But anyway, I just want to say a big thank you to my patrons uh, for sticking by me over Christmas. Christmas is a hard month for YouTubers, like I said. Uh, so thank you very much. And uh, I guess I'll see you next time. Um, bye!